Hey guys, Jafar here. Traps are essential to help defend your loot from unwanted intruders. In this video, we'll look at each trap device, how to operate them, the best strategies, and how to incorporate them into a design. Starting off, we have the shotgun trap. The primary use cases include protecting your front door, guarding your compound walls, or killing your enemies after you make them fall for your trap based design. When loaded with handmade shells, the shotgun trap will automatically fire at anyone who stands in front of it and doesn't have building privileges. Therefore, be careful when clearing the building privileges, as you may be killed by your own traps. The shotgun trap has a detection range of 4 meters, or 1.3 foundations, a rate of fire of 120 rounds per minute, and deals 180 damage. Here we can see how many shots it would take to kill a naked, cloth, metal, and tank kit. In total, the trap contains 300 HP and requires this quantity of explosive items to be destroyed, along with the melee weapons. The best strategies for avoiding the shotgun trap include baiting it. This requires you to find a specific spot where you can stand and take minimal to no damage, while causing it to continuously shoot. This will drain its ammo reserve and eventually allow you to walk inside. However, if it's not possible to drain, you can sometimes mitigate its damage by quickly running past. This is risky but can save you a lot of time. Place the trap close up against the wall or corners. Make sure it is directly facing the corner and not angled away. If at any point the enemy can see the trap without it hurting or shooting them, you have failed, as they'll just destroy it. The overall best locations that put a shotgun trap include drop down rooms or when the enemy has to climb up using a ladder. An entrance with a half wall or drop down is a great way to hide your traps without the enemies being able to shoot it or blow it up. Additionally, when placing, try to avoid putting the shotgun traps on ceilings, as they'll likely miss a lot of their shots, allowing the enemy to crouch under and get inside. They can also shoot through twig building blocks, so you can use this to hide the trap from the line of sight. The shotgun trap is crafted at a level 1 workbench, costing a total of 720 scrap for the tech tree. However, it can be directly researched for 125 scrap. You can purchase this device from the outpost shop costing 150 scrap, and can find it within these loot containers. Next up, the flame turret. It may not be as quick to kill as the shotgun trap, but it can be extremely handy at slowing down a raid or stopping enemies from quickly entering a section of the base, as it will form a wall of fire after shooting. The flame turret requires low grade fuel to operate and works the same as the shotgun trap, where it will shoot players directly in front of it. The flame turret has a range of 5.6 meters or 1.9 foundations, a consumption rate of 30 low grade fuel per minute, and can kill you in between 2 to 4 seconds. In total, the turret contains 300 HP and requires the exact same quantity of explosives and melee items as the shotgun trap to be destroyed. It's quite easy not to get killed by the flame turret, as long as you don't rush around a corner and get yourself stuck in the middle. If you get a little burnt, just back off and wait. For the best strategies for placement, put flame turrets in vital walkways that will slow down enemies if they attempt to get past. Raiding a base is all about speed towards the tool cupboard. The longer it takes, the higher the chances the raiders will be killed by nearby players or the base owners. The flame turret is crafted a level 1 workbench, costing a total of 735 scrap for the tech tree. However, can be directly researched for 75 scrap. You can purchase this device from the outpost shop costing 250 scrap, and can find it within these loot containers. Moving on, we have the Tesla coil. This device will electrocute your enemies when in range, at the cost of power consumption and durability loss to the device. Unlike the previous traps, we'll now need a way to generate and store power within the base. The Tesla coil has a range of 3 meters or 1 foundation consumes 35 power per minute, and deals 35 damage per second when fully powered. The damage will also stack, allowing you to place multiple down to kill players even quicker. No matter the gear level, all players will be killed at the same rate. In total, the coil contains 250 HP, and can be destroyed by this quantity of explosives and melee weapons. The Tesla coils can be paired up with smart devices such as the smart alarm, heartbeat sensor, and door controller. When enemies enter a room, the heartbeat sensor will detect the player, send electricity to the door controller to close the doors, 
and alert your smart alarm connected to your phone that notifies you a player has entered the base. Otherwise, you can connect a smart switch so you can toggle on and off the device from your phone. Here's the setup for the automated room. First, link up the door controllers to the doors. They'll need to be unlocked. Now, we'll place down three electrical branches and one AND switch. Branch off some power from the battery to the heartbeat sensor. Essentially, when the player is detected, it will allow the battery and heartbeat sensor to send out power to the AND switch, therefore letting power through to the Tesla coil. Now to close the doors, place down a blocker. Branch off at least 4 power so we can power the door controllers and blocker. Connect the final branch's branch node to the blocker's block node. Essentially, when the AND switch lets out power, it will stop power flowing through the blocker and close the doors. Tesla coils are best used inside closed off spaces, so to avoid them, don't go randomly walking into small open rooms where you can have the doors closed off behind you. Otherwise, make sure to check the walls for signs of electricity cables or Tesla coils. For the best strategy of placing them, hide them behind or above door frames, so by the time the enemy has seen them, they are already inside the room that will trap them. The Tesla coil was crafted a level 2 workbench, costing a total of 340 scrap for the tech tree. However, can be directly researched for 20 scrap. You can purchase this device from the outpost shop, costing 75 scrap and can find it within these loot containers. Next, we have the homemade landmine. These are commonly placed outside your base, within bushes, thick grass, or inside your compound walls. They can be handy to chuck down with a decay rate of 48 hours, but just remember where you have placed them. If you happen to get stuck on one, you'll hear it trigger. However, you can get a friend to run up and disarm it. The landmine has an explosive range of 3.2 meters or 1.1 foundations. After running over it, the player can expect to be dealt 100 damage. Therefore, here are the charts for your survival chances based on armor. Landmines have 100 HP and can be quickly destroyed by shooting it twice. Avoid bushes around houses at all costs. If you see a spot that allows you to easily camp or hide from the house owner, it's likely if they were to place down landmines, it would be there. Now saying that, when placing them down, target the areas which you think that would allow players to get the jump on you. The landmine is crafted a level 2 workbench, costing 650 scrap for the tech tree. However, can be directly researched for 125 scrap. You cannot purchase this item, but it can be found within these loot containers. Finally, we have reached the auto turret. This item is the staple of traps, but is much harder to obtain and operate. I would recommend watching my dedicated auto turret guide to learn about the device. However, you will need to provide your own gun along with powering it. Also, when placing one down, you will need to face it the right way, as it has a detection aim cone of 180 degrees, otherwise players can sneak past behind it. The auto turret has a range of 30 meters, or 10 foundations consumes 10 power every minute, and the damage dealt would depend on the weapon provided. As for health, it has 1000 HP, and requires this quantity of explosive items to be destroyed, along with melee weapons. A has target output node can be found on the turret. Connect this to a smart alarm. When the smart alarm is paired to the phone, it will trigger if the turret detects a player. The same can also be done for low or no ammo nodes. To take down an auto turret, I would recommend using a Molotov, Flamethrower, Incendiary Rocket or Fire Arrow. Really anything that can burn it over time. 
If it's on the roof or in the open, you can quickly run up and circle around quicker than it can turn. Now smack it with a melee weapon. As for placement, always make sure players can't see it outside of its range. Otherwise, it would be dead easy to take one down with a few fire arrows, more completely safe. Additionally, place it as low as possible, since players will be able to bait its shots if it's too close to an edge. The auto turret can be crafted a level 2 workbench, costing 730 scrap for the tech tree. However, it can be directly researched for 500 scrap. If you would rather purchase one, you can do so at the outpost for 400 scrap. If you are stingy and don't want to spend your dimes, you can find them within these loot boxes. The bear trap also exists, but works in almost an identical way to the landmine, so apply the same strategies to it. It can also be rearmed. However, that's it for all of the trap devices, and hopefully this video has helped you understand how they work and where to place them. Thanks guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.